Real estate brokers, trainers, team leaders, coaches, this one's for you. What are the components that make a successful real estate agent training program? Let's chat about that today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. Jan, we just finished up a series on books, and you know we've talked about books a lot over the you know, over the years in in different forms, and have actually even done podcasts on books before. But that was a really fun series, and we've gotten some good uh, hits and some good comments back from that. Uh, I think we what was good about that series is we broke it into the three parts. And we took a deeper dive into uh, nine of the nine books. So it was, it was pretty cool. So if you didn't catch that series, go over to WBNLpodcast.com. It was episodes. Well, you'll find them. There's books on there. There's books, <laughs> on, the, with books on the thumbnails. Rate. So you'll find them on there or over on YouTube. You'll find them there as well. And if you're over on YouTube, go ahead and give us a, you know, a like and maybe subscribe to our channel if you haven't done mm -hmm. that already. Anyway, we're switching gears today. Jana Bryan going to talk about training, which yep. happens to be in our wheelhouse. It happens to be. And so we get a lot of inquiries about people that are looking to create a training program for themselves, you know, or to have something that they can find that they can use, which obviously we have a solution for that. But we want to do this show today from a perspective of what did we think about when we put our training program together and what really, if anybody's just going to start from scratch, what should be in your agent training program? And obviously, we're, we're talking fundamentals here, so new, newer agents. But honestly, what we found is there's a lot of agents that are out there that are seasoned agents, if you will, been in the business quite a few years that still need to get back to the basics. So frankly, I think a training program needs to cover all the bases. You can always have advanced type topics for specialty trainings, but you can't get away from the basics. And a lot of times, even the most seasoned veteran real estate agent needs to get back to the basics. So we're going to cover primary topics that ought to be in your agent training program. We're going to discuss effective delivery methods, maybe some additional components you might want to consider. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about what's in our program. So you can go check that out if you want to consider partnering with us, which we'll get to that in a little bit here. So why don't we just dive in and we'll talk about the primary topics. So there's a few key topics and some bullet points. And again, all these details are always over in our show notes. What are we at? 291 today? 291. Inching closer to that 300th episode. We, uh, we've got, we're trying to plan something fun for that one. All right. Topic number one, just the real estate fundamentals and practices. So here's where you could integrate laws and regulations, which, you know, new agents just got all that in pre-licensing, but now you're going to bring all that home into what's really important for people to know around agency disclosure and just what you have to do around laws and regulations, even ethics. Okay. Obviously, contracts and disclosures need to be everything that goes in to a working with a buyer, working with a seller, every possibility. And then if you have specialty, if you're working with rentals or if you do commercial or property management, obviously you have to include that. But I'm just saying generally for a residential real estate company or team, you need to have thorough understanding. Agents need to understand how to complete the contracts uh, and so forth. So that's number one. Number two, sales technique and client management. So lead generation and prospecting strategies, obviously, how are people going to get business? How do they build those relationships and networking? So this is where you're going to have things like the CRM, do they have a CRM of some sort or how do you help people stay in touch? How, how do they have a system so they can stay in touch with everybody that they know? Also, negotiation techniques, uh, closing, all these skill practices, presenting skills. These are all the things that need to be a part of the sales techniques and client management area, right? The third B key area is marketing and branding. So helping people create an online presence, developing their own personal brand, maybe in conjunction with whatever your rules are for your brokerage or team to co-brand with you, if you will. Uh, how to effectively use social media and digital marketing and what are what are the do's and don'ts of that genre if you're going to use that. Creating marketing materials and all their presentations for listings and buyers. Ever so important right now to have a solid buyer presentation just like you've always had a great listing presentation. 
Number four, technology in real estate. So this is where you'll dive into all the MLS tools, your CRM or any other tools, apps that you're using that your MLS or local association provides or your company provides. How do the agents use those and how do they integrate that effectively in working with their clients? There's a lot of tools that are client forward and allow clients to use and communicate. And so people have to get up to up to par with that as well. Virtual tours, digital staging. There's all kinds of cool things out there from Matterport to virtually staging. Are you integrating any of those things? Then mobile and cloud technologies, as I mentioned, apps. Okay, so obviously all the tech and social media stuff. Uh, financial skills, just from the perspective of understanding financing options, mortgages, loans, specialty programs. Now, we don't try to turn real estate agents into loan officers, but they need to have the core basic understanding of financing maybe a little bit on investments, working with investors. It's a little bit more advanced, but it's certainly something uh, that you might want to include. Tax implications, do they understand 1031 exchanges? Um, do they understand FERPTA when you have a foreign seller? Right. So a lot of things go into the that part of the transaction as well. And then um, ethics and professional conduct, You know, this is something you usually do in your continuing education. All states require, and the National Association of Realtors requires uh, ethics training. Uh, however, I think it's great to integrate that into your overall training where you're talking about fair housing and equal services and your, your conflict resolution and how to deal with everybody fairly and bring the code of ethics into everything that you're doing there. Okay, so that's common sense, but that's a good starting point if you're really on the drawing board going, what do we do to, to draw this up? Because it's not just the basic you know, systems, you got to integrate some of that other stuff as well in your overall training. Like, and you can, let's talk about effective delivery methods now. So for, for a formal training program, obviously the best way, Matt and I have been doing this a long time. We actually have our certification for our real estate sales builder course, which we're going to talk about at the end here. So if you're interested in knowing a little bit more, we're going to briefly cover that. And we've done some videos in the past on that. And in our show notes, we'll have all the information to go check it out or to schedule a consultation with us so we can help you if you really are looking for a solution for your team or company. But we find that it's not just about online. We obviously provide an online course, but our certification course is all about what we're talking about right now, a live training delivery of your class with maybe workshops to reinforce the material that is in your actual training modules. So this allows for interactive sessions. Getting people to come into the office is what it, your, wherever your training space is, I think is critical. Yep. So many people ever since COVID, we, everybody wants to just do Zooms and it's more, it's easier and, you know, to just jump on a Zoom. And that's the next best thing to being there, I guess, if, you, if that's the reality, if you can, only way you can get people to show up is to do both. And a lot of our clients actually do both. They have people live in the classroom and then, people are at least joining via Zoom, but I think the people joining via Zoom miss out a little bit on sure. the ability to role play, but that's up to you as an instructor to engage the online students if you're gonna do some role playing and, and that type of stuff in your training classes. Um, so I really think live training is key. You have to allow for some knowledge, practice and skill practice. So the very worst thing that I think you can do is whole like partner with us get our online training and then have people come in on a tuesday at uh, nine o'clock and show the videos so we walk through in our training program how to use that as the foundation so that's the second delivery method online courses and webinars so this allows for the flexibility for people that maybe are part-time right now but also allows when you have online training for people to go back and work on whatever they feel they need to work on so for example an agent may join you and in the first six months they just work with buyers and even though they went through the training program they learned about working with sellers but they never really have done one a lot of times it's been a year and they've never worked with a, right. a seller so maybe they need to go revisit that so if you have an ongoing training obviously program they could join into your live training again, but they could also go back and get the modules on how to find sellers and work with them and close them and so on. So I think a combination of live training work and workshops hands-on where you go out in the field or you have them practice whatever you're covering that particular week, 
coupled with an online foundational course is probably the key to success. Would you agree, Matt, on that? Absolutely. Okay. And so you can also, what live training doesn't have to be just you as the broker trainer team leader. You could bring in guest speakers. You could bring in vendor partners, bring a mortgage person in to talk about the financial stuff and, you know, have a title company come in and talk about net sheets versus the settlement statement and closing disclosures. So there's all kinds of ways that you can do that. You have seasoned agents who like to train, who maybe are good at listings. Maybe they come in and they're a guest speaker in one of your sessions. So there's a lot of ways for you to do that and make it engaging training, right? Okay. So those are the two ways. And then another key part of uh, effective delivery of your training is to have some kind of mentoring, okay? Shadowing program, uh, have some coaching involved. So it's not just come get instruction, now go out and do it, which is definitely what you need to do. But there needs to be some way to get everybody back together and either doing group mentoring, one on one, or maybe you have, uh, we've done it all having agents, you have agents in your company, if you're a larger company that maybe are agents who are willing to allow new agents to shadow them, and you work out some compensation, perhaps that doesn't come out of their their uh, side of the split maybe, but maybe it's part of you sharing some of your company dollars, lots of ways to do that, right? Yep. Allowing agents to go observe a closing and go to open houses before they do one themselves or go right along on how to show property. This is how agents are gonna learn better. You can do mock versions of that. Let's go show property and demonstrate it, which is also great, but nothing's better than you know a real agent and somebody tagging along. and introducing that to the client saying, Hey, this is Jan. She's new to the company. And you know, this is part of what we do for our agents and she's going to be riding along with us today. Okay. And observing not get, and when you're the observer, you have to let your agents know, do not get in the middle of all of that. Just be a good little observer and take notes and so on. Right. right. And it's then so interesting, Jan. we have been, you and I both in our separate companies before we even actually met each other, we have worked on training programs, our whole entire real estate career. We really have right. And putting them together and, and working on, you know, the best method and there's people get caught up so often in when they're putting a training program together on how long the program should be. And we're going to get into all this too, but how long the training, the program should be and when agents can join the program and all of those different things that can really just must muck up the gears. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have to have a program where agents can jump in whenever they're ready to start mm -hmm. and you can get them up to speed and they can go. I, I think it's interesting. I think you can really tell what kind of dedication a broker has to actually either wanting to have a training program as a recruiting tool or want to have a training program to actually train their agents up to be, to be active, thriving agents, right? So that's why, you know, I you have to have an online component. Absolutely. Jan, Jan and I both are big online. We, we, we like online courses, right? We can do that. A lot of people can't do that only, you know? So there you would have an agent that would probably log in, more than likely probably not log in, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, that would be lost. So that's why we really, really stress that online, or excuse me, that in-person live training, because it's so important to be able to mentor and coach them along the way, because they're going to have questions and things are going to come up that are just not textbook in, a, in an online course. So this really, the, marrying those two options, those two things, that the, the very first two things you mentioned is really the key to the whole process. I totally agree. And you, you're hitting on a frustration of all trainers, brokers, yep. team leaders. I, I've been there so many times. I'm a trainer from all the years before we started our coaching company. That is what my love is. I put all kinds of training programs together and I would get so frustrated because people would not show up. Right. So we were hiring a lot of new agents and through my, through my years as a real estate broker in different companies, but this is just the reality, guys. We just want to throw a little something out there. Be aware that you're going to get frustrated that you're providing some great training and just a few people show up because it's worse now than it ever was because yeah, yeah. it's just the reality of it. Two in 10, two to three in 10 are going to make it. So if you're going to go with hiring new agents, you just have to understand that. You have to constantly be recruiting so you can find the people. Maybe four or five out of that 10 additional have a transaction or so in them. But that is just the reality of it. People think this business is going to be easy. I just saw a meme yesterday that cracked me up. And it's one of those things where it's a celebrity laughing hysterically. 
and the point of view thing said, when an agent tells me they got into real estate for flexible hours and people are just, <laughs> and it's the classic, that's why people get in the real estate business. I want to make up six figures and it's going to be flexible yeah. and I'm my own boss. And then they realize, wow, it's a lot of work and I'm going to work harder than I ever did anywhere else. So that's all part of the game. But to have a training program in place that doesn't rely on you they have to call you for everything, which they're still going to do, but you can have an organized thing and get people up to speed and find the ones that are going to make it. Okay. So a couple other things in delivery, definitely, definitely get people role-playing yep. and practicing with scripts, do hands on things, not just sit in the classroom like they were in pre-licensing, get them in to the classroom for working with buyers today and go through all those components, answer questions, ha help them, role play, you know, a consultation, demonstrate a consultation, get them to practice it. That's what they need. Then you might have a follow-up workshop. That's our perfect schedule. You know, one day a week followed up by like a workshop on another day, a Saturday or something where you're going to maybe go in the field or you're going to sit in, for example, here is the buyer that here's all the things that the buyer wants, write the contract. So yeah. that way you can that you can test and see if everybody is getting it. Okay. Uh, so all that stuff's super important, helping them with all the components as you go through. Okay. What are some additional things that you could put in to augment your training program? Definitely some type of tracking activities uh, and tracking the results, which we obviously put that into our program. It's right off the bat. It's there's a self paced version for people to just set their goals, track their results, track their activities and track the results over the course of the training program. And then we teach you in our certification program, how to take that and put it on a bigger level. So your coach or trainer can, you know, hold everybody accountable and check their work. Feedback and evaluation. I think it's great to get feedback from your agents on how's it going. Is the training working? What are, what are some of their challenges, what's happening, and then adjust your training, the, your delivery, you know, accordingly, right? You need to have maybe some kind of continuing education uh, component. So whether that be who you partner with that maybe provides continuing education, if you don't already do it, I mean, everyone needs to get CE or post-licensing in their first year. So there will be ways that you're already handling that, but just make that a part of uh, the clear communication that when somebody joins you, you have your fundamental real estate course. Here's how we do it. Here's how we get you up to speed. Plus, we have a way for you to get your continuing education or post licensing. That's just going to help people, um, you know, feel like they want training. You've got that check. That's not all they want. But right. if you have most people when they're newer, newer are that is on their top three. What are you how are you going to train me? Right. Uh, encourage encourage your agents to get professional certifications like right now, ABR. The accredited buyer representative is a must, I think. And NAR is offering it for free right now. And for the rest of the year of 2024, because of the settlement and the changes that now have been pushed a little bit to August, um, actually. So it was July. And now we got two dates in August and September that uh, things have to happen in the MLS where there's no offer of co-op and uh, you have to start working you buy a brokerage agreement. It gives the associations more time to get all the information out, but that's coming folks. We're not getting away from it. Yeah. So that all has to be part of your course. Um, but I, you know, getting people to go get an ABR right now where the training is free, which is usually a couple hundred bucks. It's a yeah. two day course. You can do it online right now at NAR and just choose a course and go do it. And our local association, they're teaching it about two more times this year. I'm actually signed up for one of the live ones because I want to go learn. I'm always learning, right? We're always learning. So that's an example. There's lots of other certifications, but think of that as you've got your core training, your CE and post, and then you've got graduate level training, and that's where they can get all these designations and certifications. And then additional support resources you might have in your company, maybe through your ENO or things like access to legal and professional advice. Yeah. Most state associations have a hotline, a legal hotline, you know, it's just all those things that help people help you help them answer their questions and so forth. And then last little uh, idea here is to integrate resources for stress management and work life balance. And guess what, we That's have right. you covered on that one, we have a core version of our Align Connect Prosper course, which I'm in the middle of redoing right now. 
and adding a whole bunch of other content. Very excited about that because I've been doing a lot of work in that area personally, and I'm going to be sharing and pulling things together on that, and we're going to launch a new and upgraded version. So the key there, Matt, is if, if you go get our course for what is the little tiny value where you're offering it for? What does it cost? Three ninety seven. No, Align Connect Prosper. Oh, night oh, that course. Nineteen bucks. Nineteen dollars. If you go get our nineteen dollar version that we have right now, you will get the for the upgrade that when it comes out, that'll definitely not be nineteen dollars. It's gonna no. be closer to, you know, the ninety ninety nine to one hundred and fifty anyway. Okay. So uh, there you have it. Those are the uh, primary topics, delivery methods, and some, maybe some additional components to consider. So we want to just kind of end today and talk a little bit about our online course called Real Estate Sales Builder. Now, just quick backstory. When Matt and I launched WBNL Coaching, it was in 2015, and we really wanted to focus on team builders. Uh, helping agents build teams and creating some curriculum around that in a course, which we just didn't see anything out in the marketplace. So we did that. We launched that. And as we started to coach and work with agents who, who got our program, we realized a lot of them, seasoned agents, did not have the core fundamental systems in place. So we created Sales Builder. Now, this is the second version of Sales Builder, and we are identifying components in there now. Uh, especially with, we cover buyer consultation, for example, but I feel like we're going to do some, be doing some upgrades to that course yeah. based on things that have changed now and the reality that you must, you know, uh, once we have everything all lined out the way it's going to work across the country, we'll add some additional training. And, and when you get our training, anything that we add to it or update, obviously you get that. You have it for, it's a one-time fee. You don't have to pay, you know, ongoing fees for it. So we just want to briefly tell you uh, what's in the program. We designed it with that in mind, with the agent that didn't really have all their systems, they were super successful agents, but they didn't have duplicatable systems in place so that when they hired an agent, they didn't know what how to help the agent. So they, the two really work together. Uh, and then we realized that as in the last couple of years, we were having a lot of brokers and teams reach out to us to say, I need a training program. So we took our sales builder program and built a certification program around it. And that is another purchase that you can get specifically for people that want to partner with us. And you can just reach out and learn a little bit more about it, but we'll do a consultation. We'll tell you the different ways that you can, you can um, co-brand. So it really looks like it's your training, but you partner with us. The white label, we, we can offer a white label, but it's really a super expensive solution. We think that our middle solution is the best. So you can just get our certification program and learn how to use it. And we teach you exactly how to run the program right. with a lot of the components that we just talked about today. So let, we're just going to cover what the 12 modules are really quick. We, we kind of walk through from beginning to end, everything that we felt an agent needed to have to run a true real estate business for themselves, starting with the fundamentals of real estate and a business planning goals. Uh, and everything that we have are in bite size, not one hour long webinars. There might be an hour, an hour and a half per workshop or more or less, but it's broken down into seven, 10, 12 minute, maybe 15 minute videos, the longest one. We always have accompanying downloads and a workbook that supports every one of these modules, a let's get to work checklist so that they People can integrate what they've learned. It's got to, you know, it's not just sit and watch. You got to take action and have those action items. And we provide all of that. But this is a great fundamental course. This is the only part that's really focused on new people. Business planning is for everybody. But the first half of this module is all about what does it take to be successful in the real estate business? What are the traits? What do you need to get ready for? What are the skills to help the new people really? you know, set expectations for the newer agents. And then goal writing and business planning and our complete business plan is in there. Module two is all about building your database and getting referrals. So again, we cover all the basics, setting up the core connections to uh, your annual connection plan, how to create a, a monthly newsletter, all the things that we actually do in our own business right now. Just tips on cultivating repeat and referral business, uh, calls, texts, notes, all the basics that everyone ought to be doing already. Now, uh, module three, open houses work. So we have a whole module dedicated to effective open houses from A to Z, how to create your kit, you have the right mindset for for uh, co for coaching for uh, open houses to how do you prepare? How do you make it your place of business today? 
how do you promote it, conduct it, uh, how to do a virtual open house. We had that in there because of COVID, right? You never, right. There might be times where you want to do that still. So we left it in post open house and so forth. I just think open houses are so key for, especially for anybody, but new agents, especially four is working with buyers. It's just A to Z. How do you find them? How do you cultivate? How do you nurture the art of showing homes, which I think is an art, a lost art for some people tips on writing and submitting offers, negotiating. Now we can of course tell people how to fill out the contracts because our, our program is good for any state. Um, we've had people in Canada work with us as well. So you have to add that part in your training program, the specifics for your area, which is what we cover in great detail with the coaching manual, the whole nine yards in our certification program. But we certainly can talk about the basics of how to negotiate with buyers and sellers and, you know, and, and we've included all that. Uh, module five is, is personality and communication styles. And honestly, this is really our, this is our sales cycle and our little bit more advanced sales skills, which I think it's great. I love this teaching this because this works in all areas of people's lives when they get clear about every one of their clients is not exactly the same and they should be yeah. working with them differently. I'm going through that right now, actually, with a client and you just have to go back to that training. <laughs> That's all I'll tell you about that. All right. Module six and seven are both about sellers. So the first module is how the work, the, the beginnings, working with sellers. How do you find them? Uh, how do you attract them? Talking about expires, FISBO. So a little bit on prospecting, leveraging your listings, qualifying the seller, getting ready to go on the listing appointment. And then in module seven, we talk about the pre-listing. I really think a pre-listing appointment and pres uh, you know sending stuff out ahead of time is a smart way to go. But what's in your listing pres presentation and marketing? I have the three Ps that I use, pricing, uh, rather preparation, pricing, and promotion. We go into great detail, objection handling, and then what we call before, during, and after, both in the buyer module and then here, before, during, after. Everything you need to do, how to create a checklist around that. So this is all about systems. Module eight, farming. Farming is not just geographical, so we cover everything about uh, advanced geographical farming, but then we talk about niche and target farming, uh, building an agent network, leveraging LinkedIn, a couple other ways to consider farming, uh, which I like. And then in 10, we cover, oh no, nine, I missed nine, nine social media and online presence. Now we're not, social media changes so much. What we talk about here is the power of setting up a, pr a profile on all the places when somebody Googles you, they're going to find you. So we talk about establishing that presence, how to write a great bio. And we do cover Zillow, Realtor.com, Google My Business, uh, Yelp, if you want to use that, and the basics of social media. What platform do you want? It's the fundamentals. Definitely LinkedIn. Uh, how to use Canva, and talking about video, how powerful video is. You really need to get additional in the moment training for social media because it really changes so much. Uh, so we don't have it included in here on just the basics of how to be successful because it's the same on all the platforms. It's just the how to part changes. Module 10 is online lead gen and conversion. So here we're just talking about setting expectations, understanding the sales funnel when you get an online lead, how long sometimes it takes to develop that, the types of leads, uh, overview of different ways that you can do lead sources. We do have a little bit in here on Facebook advertising because when we first wrote the program, that was that's still a way people do things or Google advertising. So you can still do that. We've personally moved away from that by doing more video and found a way to do, you know, found our little groove with that. So how to nurture your leads and so forth. And then in 11, we get into niche marketing, come back to BDA before, during and after and how to get client reviews. So just go over how to find what is your thing, what is your niche, and then how do you capitalize on that? Okay, so that gets a little, these last two are a little bit on the, you know, go from the basics and, and take it up a notch. And then finally, we end with 12, with it, which is business and financial fundamentals, which is really money management, setting things up so you pay your taxes, tracking your metrics, revisiting your business plan, reasons to consider incorporating best practices to reduce your risk. That's how we end it all up. Okay. So that program is 397. It's yours to have. And then broker our certification program. Uh, is that the same price that we're, we're offering that right now? 497, 397? 597 for just the certification alone. Certification without is 597. You get, if so that's for trainers, brokers, team leaders, you get a license of sales builder, which is a 397. Plus you get our certification program, 
with all the videos that we've recorded on how to run your program, checklist, the coaching manual, the supplemental training that you need to add for your state. Uh, all that is in there for you. So we just wanted to cover uh, anybody who might be out there Googling, how do I build a training program or the components of a successful training program? And then uh, go, you know, go build one. Um, but if you don't have the time to actually put the fundamentals together, that's where we come in and we can help you customize it and make, make help you have a solid, successful training program for your team or company. Absolutely. Good stuff. Hey, this was episode 291. We're going to have a ton of stuff in the show notes. So if you are watching this on YouTube, you know, go into the description, click over to the show notes and check it out. Um, if you are you know, watching or listening on the podcast, go to our show notes. We'll have all the information that we gave you today on what needs to be in your training program. If you're going to, you're going to go out there and spend the time to build that training program yourself, or if you are interested in getting more information about what our training program is and how we help with certification, all that information, videos on all of that and where you can access all that uh, uh, information will all be over at the show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com. This was uh, episode 290. There's just so much involved in real estate team, team uh, sales builder. I love it when Jen was going through that. You, you know, the hitting the highlights of that is it just it doesn't even scratch the surface of what's involved in that program because there's over I think there's 96 separate videos in that uh, that course, over 110 document downloads, including a separate module overview for each uh, module. Those checklists all through there, a complete business plan, uh, scripts and dialogue and, and just just a ton of stuff that is going to help you, uh, you know, thrive in your business. And if you're if you're from the other side, from a broker side or a team leader side looking at how to train agents, it's stuff that you will not have to build yourself, which, you know, it's huge. And we, we love it. We've been like Jana said, we, we built our original course way back when and we've updated it and we keep updating it and we keep adding things to it. And we will continue to do that as we um, as things change in the industry, which they do all the time. So. All right. And I will work on my lighting because I look like Casper the Friendly Ghost right now. Yeah, you, you look oh, great. Too, bro. You look I don't better know than I do. Thank you very much. So. I don't know. It's something going on. And uh, that's it, folks. So we'll see you next time here at Wandering But Not Lost. That's right.